Hi guys, it is February 1, 2019. A shortage of anxiety drug leaves patients scrambling and anxious buspirone. That's the generic name for buspar. Uh, the FDA shut down a manufacturing plant in West Virginia, Mylan Pharmaceuticals. They make buspar. They're one of three manufacturing uh, companies that make Buse Barone. Uh, they shut them down because they didn't have any quality control. Uh, it was a dirty plant. Hmm. Well, now people can't get their Buse Barone. I will link below to this article. Um, but here are some anecdote, anecdotes that the New, New York Times has provided for us. One person has given their name. Other people have not given their name. Who knows? New York Times could have just made up these anecdotes of what people are going through. But uh, they are certainly reflective of what people go through when they're suddenly out of their psychiatric meds. Uh, this woman, Shelby Vintick, a 27-year-old writer in New York, uh, New Jersey, uh, she called dozens of drugstores in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, in an, in an attempt to locate the medication after her pharmacist told her the drug was on back order with no end in sight. Yes, the Mylan Pharmaceuticals, they have stated, we don't know when we're going to resume manufacturing Buspiron. Wow. Well, wow. God, they must have been really, really dirty. See, I think all of this is deliberate. It's deliberate in that you are no longer, you Americans, you can't rely on anything anymore. The days of feeling secure are gone. Kafka Winston World. I posted a video um, on my original channel, channel and channel that got terminated but I think that was on Adderall a shortage of Adderall for ADHD you see mainstream media tells you over and over and over again these drugs are not addictive they are addictive you know, when the profession of psychiatry actually chose to not use the word withdrawal effects Instead, they chose discontinuation effects. That was to confuse the American public. Get them to believe that these drugs are not addictive. You use the word withdrawal, that's associated with addiction. Well, they are addictive. Uh, and once again, New York Times says these drugs are not addictive. And it really, the lying that goes on, the dangerous lies, it's so disturbing. But you know what? We've had the internet now for quite a while. And if people just don't want to educate themselves, well, then they're not only going to be living in a very, um, in a world that has become unreliable, feeling more and more anxiety because they can't rely on anything, security is gone. Um, well, you're all, you're also going to be facing an awful lot of problems in your life due to the countless lies you're being told. Oh boy, 34-year-old New York woman who couldn't get buspirone, refilled in January, um, said she couldn't sleep, had severe panic attacks. She had to use clonopin, a drug she dislikes because that's addictive. I'm trying to take care of my anxiety and it's giving me a panic attack. A Pennsylvania medical school student received her mail order shipment of medications last week, but no buspirone was in it and no explanation either. So she scrounged around the house and dug up old pills from missed doses doses. Does that not sound like addiction to you? It sure does to me. 
Um, she was so anxious she could not leave the house. There is an elderly woman here at the apartment complex that I live in, and she has twice told me that she has gone to pick up her prescriptions, and once she picked up her prescription and they didn't have her blood pressure medication, there was a shortage of blood pressure medication and the other medication, I can't remember what it was, but she's on about five medications, psychiatric medications as well. Um, this psychiatrist in Maryland said this is potentially mis messing with people's clinical stability. You really don't want to just arbitrarily have someone come off the medication. And I honestly don't recall issues like this interfering with care until maybe a couple of years ago. Wow. Oh, 34 years in practice and this uh, shortage of medications just happened a couple of years ago. So what's going on here? Hmm. Could it be that they are now um, creating, manifesting life here for Americans to just, you can't rely on anything. Think about one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because shit hits the fan. EMP attack. Oh, all Americans off their meds. Now, if you wanted to um, create a recipe for real big and uh, insanity manifesting suddenly, that's one way to do it. You got millions upon millions of adults and kids addicted to psychiatric medications and suddenly due to the shit hits the fan, economic collapse, EMP attack, whatever, trucks can't deliver medications, everything stops, grinds to a halt. Wow! Now that's going to be a pretty sight. Persistent shortages have plagued hundreds, hundreds of drugs in recent years, from morphine to intravenous fluids, uh, many psychiatric medications used to treat schizophrenia, as well as stimulants to treat ADHD um, in short supply. Some of the worst shortages are of generic or non-brand names, drugs like buspirone whose prices have been driven so low that many manufacturers say they can't return a profit on them. One in five Americans have been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. One in five. Wow. Now that's just anxiety disorder. Think about all of the mental illnesses that have been, well, uh, created. These are not medical issues. These are not medical ailments. Yes, psychiatrists, they love to wear the white coat. They love to march on with their arrogance thinking they're medical doctors and they're not. They're not. They're not. The uh, DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Illness, has in a couple of decades gone from a very, very small manual to a manual that's about as thick as what, maybe six inches or eight inches with uh, over 300 mental illness disorders. And how did they come up with these illnesses? They vote on them. No joke. They vote on them. That's how they come up with it. These psychiatrists don't even know how these drugs work in your brain. Okay, so one in five with an anxiety disorder, and you've got a lot of Americans who can't get their medication for it. The effectiveness of these drugs? Oh, a big question. Well, many studies have proven their efficacy is not significant. So these medications, well, 
Okay, these medications, psychi uh, psychiatric medications, they're street drugs made acceptable. Psychiatrists are drug dealers. Pharmaceutical companies are, they are the, the guys that you see in shows that are cutting, you know, and making the uh, speed or cocaine or whatever. And then they give it to the dealer, the psychiatrist, who then writes a prescription for their, well, the person who wants the drugs. Um, and then they go fill it up at the pharmacy. It is quite a practice, unbelievably evil, because these psychiatric medications cause, they ruin people's lives. They have ruined millions of lives. So, when you get to the comments from this article, oh, <laughs> well, these medications destroyed my life, my health, my career, and spun me into a nightmare that I've been living for now, oh, 16, 17 years. Many of the side effects are permanent, permanent. And in fact, there was, and I can't find it anymore, but there was a um, study done and it was, can't remember the full name, but it was PAINS, P-A-N-E-S, Permanent Adverse Neurological Effects Syndrome, I think, from these medications. Great. So, here it is. It is not addictive. Buspirone, not addictive, has few side effects, does not cause sexual dysfunction, and is remarkably inexpensive. Buspirone. Well, researchers don't know exactly how buspirone reduces anxiety. Uh, they think it uh, competes with serotonin and dopamine, which are neurotransmitters, chemical brain messengers, involved with causing anxiety symptoms. They don't know how it works. Well, you do a couple of lines of cocaine and you're going to feel better. You do a couple of hits of meth or um, take a couple of shots of alcohol and your anxiety goes away. These medications actually operate in your brain similarly to street drugs. Um, so they have side effects, which you can I'll link below to this. You can read it. I mean, the side effects of all of these psychiatric medications. Well, this site doesn't, does not. Um, it's not an um, exhaustive list. Nausea, headache, dizziness, nervousness, lightheadedness, excitement, less common side effect, constipation, diarrhea, upset stomach, dry mouth, depression, fatigue, trouble sleeping, weakness, numbness, and then rash or hives, itching, heart palpitations, or rapid heartbeat, blurred vision, abnormal and uncontrolled body movements, anger, hostility, or confusion, muscle stiffness, inability to pass urine. Guess what? They never did any long-term studies, safety studies, long-term. Um, so people are on these medications for years and years and years, and they don't know the effect of being on these medications long term. They always put in children because many, many adults are on these medications. Do you think that they did the long term safety studies on adults? They have not. They have not. So, the long term use of Puspiron, they don't know the effect. So then you have a shortage. So you don't know the effect of this, I can't get my buspirone after I've been on it for years. It does cause an awful lot of anxiety in these patients. Um, 
they don't have any alternative to buspirone, like antidepressants where they have five or six medications that they can turn to. Buspirone, it's in a world of itself. It's, it's unique uh, for some reason. And the increase over the years of prescribing buspirone, in 2017, it was 13.5 million up from 10.2 million in 2015, with the number estimated to reach nearly 15 million in 2018. Why the increase? Well, we're unclear. We just don't know why. But we think it has to do with the opioid epidemic making doctors anxious about giving any kind of anti-anxiety medication that could be lethal or addictive. So we're going to write out buspirone. Is that really why? You're just going to guess, New York Times. Um, let me uh, take a stab at guessing. More and more Americans are anxious due to the economy, due to living in a world now where you can't rely on anything. Oh, right, and that environment that has manifested, filled with toxins and Wi-Fi, microwave frequencies that cause anxiety. We're not going to do anything about that because we want our Wi-Fi, right? We've got to take that laptop from the bedroom into the kitchen. And we don't want to have to deal with those messy wires to ground our internet connection. So we're just going to not listen to any of those conspiracy theorists. We're not going to educate ourselves on how dangerous the environment has become. We're never going to get to the cause of any of our symptoms. We're just going to waddle off to a doctor, get a drug, and it will make us feel better for a while. You know, like you do a couple of lines of coke. Hey, you feel great afterwards. And then the next day you do a couple of lines of coke and you feel, hey, great. And then a week later, well, you got to do a couple of more lines to get to that great feeling that you initially had. And that's what happens with a lot of people on psychiatric medications. Oh, you feel great initially, then it stops working. Then you need more. Just like the street addict, so are the patients of psychiatrists. All doing the same thing. One acceptable, one not. And I will tell you, the street drugs are cleaner. Well, if you get a bad batch, then they're not, but um, they used to be cleaner than the pharmaceutical drugs that people are taking. Um, so it's uh, unclear when they're going to start resuming production of juice pond. And there's no resiliency in the supply chain. Well, you better get on it, right? Don't we want resiliency in the supply chain so people can get their drugs? This is very dangerous to play around with people's medications, but I'm hearing it from people and noticing you know, articles like this. Huh, well, what's going to happen? So what are these comments? Oh, I used to be prescribed Pusperone. The worst thing was when these shortages happened, I started using Kraton, never had Psychotropics again. And then you have these two who the, the arrogance is just, ooh, I can't stand these people. This woman, Angelique Craney, it is disturbing to read so many unqualified opinions about how to replace medication that enables normal functioning. As a clinician with a specialty in neuropsychiatry, I can assure you that most anxiety and depression have a neurological brain component. If you have no qualifications, refrain from offering an opinion. It is not compassionate. Well, you doling out 
these medications, ruining people's lives, getting them addicted to these medications or drugs so that you can profit, not compassionate. Not compassionate. And we're living in a time when people have access to the internet. They can now educate themselves and learn the truth about your profession, neuropsychiatry. You make up mental illnesses so that you can prescribe medication so that you can get a lot of money in your pocket and live a wonderful life while you destroy your patients. Now, the shift from uh, anxiety and depression being circumstantial, uh, relating to unresolved issues in your past, that those unresolved issues manifest as symptoms in your present life, depression and anxiety. Oh, the shift happened rather rapidly in the early 80s when Prozac came on the market. Mental illness now is biological. Haha, <laughs> really? And it's not. It's not. So these professions now just do symptom management. They're like mechanics, you know? They do symptom management. You go to see a therapist or a psychiatrist. You say, you know, you're not feeling well, you're depressed. Oh, you're clinically depressed and you need to be put on a medication. There are no medical tests to determine if somebody's mentally ill. None, none, none. That's the difference between psychiatry and the medical profession. No tests whatsoever. It is a subjective analysis. Subjective diagnosis, diagnose from a psychiatrist who's going to make a lot of money off of you writing out a prescription. Isn't that a great profession? But the arrogance is just so thick in these people, I can't stand it. And here's another one. I don't even want to read it. You can read these comments. But, yeah, this um, reason for doing this is think about shit hits the fan. going to have an awful lot of Americans who are out of their minds going through withdrawal. Yo, and just think. Put that picture in your head. People who will not be able to function. Think about how many people are just going to die because they won't be able to function. They'll be at one another's throats. They'll be trying to steal stuff. They'll be trying to break into pharmacies to get their meds. That's when you will see, wow, all of these people, they were within the acceptable you know, uh, bubble getting their prescriptions. Now they all look like street addicts, you know, those meth addicts that just rob you and haha, <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> when you have to rely on something and it's not there, that's when you get to find out that you've been lied to about the addictive quality of these medications. And it's best for everyone to wean themselves off these medications because shortages are going to be happening more and more. And should that big shit hits the fan occur, woof, boy. You're not going to be feeling very well. All links are below.